let's take a look at the HVAC systems. You'll see that underneath ventilation there's two objects, HVAC template thermostat and HVAC template zone ideal loads air system. The thermostat is extremely simple. It's just three fields here. Uh, the name of the thermostat, the name of the schedule for heating, and the name of the schedule for cooling. So by now you know to go up to the schedule compact and you can find the schedules for heating and cooling. Here's the office schedule and residential schedules and let's see if we can find the school schedules here. Um, notice that in the school schedules it has, oh it's actually got a summer design day which you can ignore and a winter design day which you could ignore. There's also weekends and holidays and all other days. So all other days would include all the weekdays. The way this is, works for school is that um, from June, January 1st to June 30th for all other days, meaning weekdays, uh, from midnight until 6 a.m., the thermostat is set for 27 degrees. From 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., the thermostat is set for 24 degrees. And then from 9 p.m. to midnight, it's set back to 27. This is called a setback thermostat because during the daytime, it's set to a more comfortable setting. And at night, when fewer people are there, it's set to a less comfortable setting. Now, in fact, in Worcester Hall, we've got um, no cooling. And so one option would be to set uh, this, uh, to, to get rid of this. But because of the system that we're using, we're using something called an ideal loads air system to handle, handle all of the heating and cooling. Let me go back and show you what this means. The ideal loads air system here is this object. And there is, you can see here, no limit to the heating capacity and no limit to the cooling capacity. The system will provide as much heating or cooling as we need in order to achieve a certain temperature. And it will report what it used. And it's also a 100% efficient system, which is equivalent, say, to electric heating is 100% efficient. Uh, the exact amount of power that you put in is the, the amount of heating energy that you get out. Now, actually, 100% efficiency sounds like an efficient system, but it's really not. Because if you look at electric systems like heat pumps, they can be 250 to 500% more efficient. The, the, it's going to be important to take a look at that after we're done running the simulation in order to account for uh, the actual heating cooling system efficiency uh, because the simulation is going to assume it's 100% efficient. So there's really nothing for you to change in this ideal loads air system. I'd just like you to know that it's there, but uh, but all these should should stay as uh, default entries. And really, the thermostat is the only thing that I'd like you to change if necessary. So going back to my school thermostat here, I was trying to make a point about uh, the cooling system. In Worcester, there is no cooling system, and so... To simulate that, we have a choice. We can simulate the energy use as a proxy for comfort, or we can simulate the energy use that is likely to occur in the actual system. If you want to use the thermostat settings as a proxy for comfort, you should leave them at reasonable levels that you think are appropriate for comfort. If you want to simulate the actual energy use of the HVAC system, regardless of comfort, you can change the thermostat settings to make sure that the, either the heating system or the cooling system never goes on, and they will affect how you should interpret those results. To eliminate the heating or cooling system, what I would do practically is to jack this up to a very high number, like 40 degrees, and then I shouldn't get any cooling out of it, because it just means that if the indoor temperature is above 40 degrees, the cooling system will go on. Well, hopefully, the cooling, the indoor temperature never gets above 40 degrees because that would be real hot. Um, it is important to note that these temperatures are all in Celsius and they must stay in Celsius. So um, if you're more comfortable with Fahrenheit, then use a little conversion to figure out what temperature. Um, by the same token, uh, in the same way that we can adjust the cooling 
thermostat in order to eliminate cooling effectively, we can adjust the heating thermostat to eliminate heating by bringing these values way down. So say I had uh, 10 degrees inside for heating, then I shouldn't get any, um, any heating. And in fact, let's just run this so you can see the results. And immediately you can see that by um, reducing the heating and cooling thermostats, I've dramatically reduced the heating and it's actually hard to see what happened with the cooling, but let's look down here and you see that I've also reduced the cooling. Now something to note, sometimes it's very difficult to see differences like that because I've got all these other numbers. So one thing I like to do is to copy this comparative use energy. So I'm going to press control C and then I'm going to paste this down here, control V. And I'm going to erase everything except for the heating and cooling. And if I can't click on it like that, I go to format, category, process, delete, format, category, uh, hot water, delete. So now I've just got heating and cooling here to compare. But sometimes this is a little bit easier to see results for just heating and cooling as opposed to all of the different end uses. So that being said, let's look at a little bit more depth here. If we look at the annual use, you see that a lot of the heating went off in this area. Um, we're still getting these little bits of cooling and that is actually importantly during the, the part of the year that we haven't adjusted. Remember in that IDF file, let's go back to this, we adjusted for G January 1st through June 30th, but we haven't adjusted after June 30th. And so you see that from January to June 30th, um, this has gone way down. Now it hasn't gone off completely, which is interesting. I wonder if we're getting some temperatures that are closer to 10 degrees inside, because it looks like it, the, it's going on when it's uh, in the middle of the day. Then in the third week in February or so, go to week and let's go to February 18th. And you see here, um, if I zoom in, cooling is here and here, and the heating is here and here. This is a weekend and this is a week, these are the weekdays here. So remember, we just changed it for the, the weekdays, not for the weekends. Uh, so we are getting some um, energy use. And in fact, you can see this is the heating. So we're getting all of this heating energy. And then when the thermostat drops down, it drops way down. And it's very interesting to see that. So in spite of the, so we've got cold weather here, this black line. And then there's even some hours, you can see like right in the middle of the day here, where we are getting some heating in order to maintain that very low 10 degree set point. So you could set it for an even lower set point in order to completely turn the heating off, but know that it's real cold in there.